First of all, thank you very much for organizing this uh, very interesting session. This is the last presentation in this session, so it will be a little bit difficult. Thank you very much for staying still here with me. Um, okay, so this is for changing. Okay. Um, in two words, my paper, my presentation is about um, exploring, exploration of non-Western ontology in action. I think this is the best description. So in my paper, I will be uh, referring uh, to anthropomorphic pottery figurines recovered in hundreds during systematic excavations on tiny oceanic islands. Uh, as figurine, I understand three-dimensional figurative anthropozomorphic object, a statuette of the portable size that is not part of any other artifact. For example, the Adorno is not a figurine. I think it's always important to underline because sometimes there are confusion about what is figurine, effigy vessel, anthropomorphic vessel, and so on. Okay, let's now uh, zoom in in our setting. Imagine this beautiful Paradise Island. This piece of land belongs to Los Roques Archipelago, a group of oceanic islands. There are atoll-shaped coral formation with nearly 50 sandy caves. Los Roques Archipelago is part of southeastern Caribbean and is located 135 kilometers off the central coast of Venezuela. Hundreds of pottery figurines were recovered in our long-term systematic excavations carried out on these islands. Largely female figurines and other artifacts were brought from the mainland to be used on the islands by the Caribbean-speaking peoples archaeologically known as bearers of Valenciate pottery that lived permanently on the north-central Venezuelan mainland between AD 1200 and the European conquest time. The provenance studies we perform of, uh, the, uh, for the island figurines using, among other, uh, prompt gamma neutron activation analysis show definitely uh, the mainland fingerprint, mainland region. Although more than 1,200 pottery figurines were produced and used between AD 800 to 1200 in the Valencia Lake Basin, it means on the mainland, and the overall richness of these imageries has no parallel in Orinoquia. Very little is known about village layouts, subsistence, depositional context, and chronology, and speculative claims have been made about the Valencia religion, social organization, and also uh, they suggested a region. Um, this is a reference, only short reference for the mainland. Now, returning to the islands, our uh, intrepid Valencioid seamen for 300 years were crossing 135 kilometers in dugout canoe, canoes, bringing dozens of figurines, anthropo and zoomorphic pottery vessels, ocarinas, bone flutes, stone artifacts, oleoresin and feline skins, among other artifacts. We interpreted the island site as temporary camps of varying occupational density, temporality, and function, where groups largely composed of specialized adult and adolescent men were extracting, processing, and preserving those marine resources that were absent or scarce on the continental coast, like turtles, salt, but especially, very specially, Queen Kong. First, as in situ Queen Kong consumption, and later as large scale exploitation. The Valencioids transformed these oceanic islands into special economic areas of extraction of mainly Lobatus gigas mollusk, exploited in great numbers and taken to the mainland for delayed consumption. For instance, La Pelona Island houses the main 
Kong's processing task scape adjacent to the principal Valenciot campsite on Dos Mosquises Island, I will be referring later to, between three to five tons, and I repeat, between three to five tons of Queen Kong meat were transported annually from Los Roques to the mainland. In Los Roques, figurines were recovered on five islands. Let's have a look to some depositional aspects of figurines on the tiny but archaeologically very special Dos Mosquises Island on which the largest numbers of figurines were recovered. Most figurines on this island were found in two types of deposition. One, where figurines were recovered together with microvessels, anthropo and zoomorphic vessels, we interpreted them as a ritual context. Here we can see some of the objects you saw in micro context in the previous slide. In another type of deposition, figurines were found in spatially circumscribed clusters of diverse artifacts and ecofacts interpreted as bundles, some as offertory uh, caches, here we can see some examples of artifacts of clear ritualistic or shamanic function like bone flutes, trumpets, ocarinas, whistles, and rattles. Here we can see tobacco pipes, ceramic burners, oleoresin, and mineral ochre, or special objects like this one. There is also a conspicuous presence of several feline margai ocelot cranial vaults, mandibular fragments and finger phalange that may suggest that feline skins were used at Dos Mosquises campsite. Many figurines were deposited close to skeletal remains uh, of an adult male, male inserted within the omnipresent queen Kong that we interpreted as a funerary context with burial offerings. Here we can see the coca powder container and some inhalers, few coming, coming from the previous context. Now, uh, the method uh, we use, we use integrative analytical approach that combine contextual archaeology, material culture studies, construction of social reality and sociology of knowledge phenomenological approaches, performance and practice, ethnographic analogy, and traditional proceedings of pottery analysis. Using specially designed method, we undertook the search for the social reality of the Los Roques figurines. In this method, analysis of archaeological context and of reconstructed social context are pivotal. Within this approach, figurine is seen not as a mute product of the pre-colonial past, but as an actor performing in meaningful actions within a temporal spatial dimension of the producers and users. We see figurines as a product of expressive symbolism. As visual representations, they do, they act, they afford, they why not affect. They are subjective constructions of conceptions of the world and of the locus of the human spirit within this world. In our work with figurines, we consider important the engagement with phenomenological approaches to the experience of the past people. And here in this picture, you can see two examples of figurines as rattles. Discussion. So, what hundreds of female figurines were doing on these oceanic islands, especially in temporary campsites far from the ancestral homeland of Amerindian visitors? Our interpretation of island figurines depended on reconstructing the social context of the use. As already mentioned, we argued that the most frequent occupants of the insular campsite were adolescent and adult males who formed Queen Kong fishery task groups. Women 
were probably rare visitors to the campsites. The success of the expeditions depended on exacting coordination of logistics, knowledge, and technology, as well as on the beneficial assistance of the spiritual forces. In the overarching perspective, the Amerindians had impacted the Queen Kong populations of the Los Roques Islands, and the exploitation had also profound, profoundly impacted, excuse me, their own society, their own spiritual, spiritual life. At this juncture, the interpretation, uh, interpretative path turned towards the most targeted island animal, the Queen Kong. Its large size, protruding eyes, human-like penis and mammal-like manner of copulation would have led the Valencioids to rank it higher in the hierarchy of agentive beings that other insular creatures. I want to add that fishermen today say that eating batuto is aphrodisiac. Well, uh, and many other stories. In this ontological taxonomy, constructed on the principles of perspectival agency and animacy, the Kongs emerge as selves with capacities to feel and act as persons. Calculations indicate that between AD 1200 and 1500, more than five million of the sentient and agentive beings were slaughtered in Los Roques. In animistic Amerindian society, slaughter on such a massive scale had to be intertwined with rituals directed towards the spirits protecting these animals. The intensity of such rituals would have dramatically increased when reduced in situ Queen Kong consumption gave way to large-scale exploitation. We consider that what archaeological record tells us about spiritual activities that accompany the Queen Kong Bachery, and I'm using here the word bachery, in Los Roques is directly related to the ritual efficiency of over 300 small pottery female figurines recovered in insular campsites. Here, the interpretative path turns toward Amerindian women. Among the Caribbean-speaking societies of the South American lowlands, the crucial role of women in the ritual conciliation of hunted animal spirit and then in re-establishing the relationship with them has been documented. The majority of feminine island figurines then may have metaphorically assumed women's ritualistic role, standing is in as miniature surrogates for the women who were left behind in the mainland settlement. Highly experiential sinescapes were orchestrated in the Los Roques campsites through the multi-sensorial perception resulting from tobacco smoking, hal hallucinogen inhaling, or oleo resin, sorry, but some words are not <laughs> easy to pronounce yet for <laughs> not original English speakers. Oleo resin burning, body painting, chanting, and music playing, and perhaps dancing as the rituals were enacted. The corpora of shamanic paraphernalia were shaping these rituals, producing a universe of conspicuous multisensory experience. In the hands of shamans, figurines became co-enactors. They interacted with humans and at the same time with other than humans entities, including spirits. Indeed, the signs of these activities may merit the name ritualscapes, in addition to conch, uh, sorry, conch processing, processing taskscape, I already mentioned. The rituals were performed on the tiny islands located far from the ancestral homeland and associated with risky endeavors. 
the petitionary and placatory rituals presided over by the shamans eventually concluded with the deposition of votive offerings that might have included figurines. The ritual enactment of the social category of women embodied in the figurines in the homosocial insular campsite would indeed prompt the Los Roques seafarers to reconceptualize the quotidian face-to-face -face relationships with the real woman in the heterosexual context of mainland villages. Conclusion. Tying up the ideological strings identified in the Los Roques archaeological record, our research demonstrated that figurines were closely related to the animated agency of the Lobatus Gigas mollusk. The human mollusk interaction on economic grounds was intertwined with the spiritual life of the Amerindians. The resulting ceremonialis has been oriented to protect the island, sorry, it is too, <laughs> uh, to, uh, to protect the island visitors from the anger of the Queen Kong and its protective spirits. We concluded that figurines assumed metaphorically the roles of women as category of social actors absent from the insular campsites and were used in shamanic activity and rituals oriented at placating the anger of the spirit protectors of animals, mainly the queen Kong. Thank you very much for your attention.